Why, hello there. Looking for the English army, 1415 to 1429, or basically the Hundred Years' War, uh, from Perry Miniatures? Then by all means, carry on watching. Uh, these are the English army for Agincourt, which is pretty awesome. Um, you can use these for all the interesting battles of the period, including the lovely Joan of Arc. Oh, yay. A mad teenage girl who had a... Her best friend was a... He did things to kids and kill people and was made the Marshal of France because she was he was her best friend. You see, I judge people by the company they keep yeah. and the kind of things that her bestest mate did. Um, I, I, I don't... I, 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 stuff Joan of Arc, she had it coming, right? She was a horrible person. And um, the her bestest friend was actually... I think it was uh, burnt alive by the French. I was, but Joan That's of Arc was... lovely. What? She was also burnt alive. She was burnt alive by the English yeah. for being mad. And <laughs> so burnt, to, uh, burnt alive being mad. I was burnt because no one liked him. <laughs> oh, he, he did things to kids. He was Just a find out. He was a serial killer. Um, he, he murdered. Yeah, he was. He was. He was absolutely it's amazing. What he could do in a position of power. Yeah, he was really horrible. The, the Joan of Arc's immediate entourage were some of the worst people in the world, and the, the um, I, I the ones in the film. Um, yeah, they're in the film. Yeah, they're the but they're nice guys in the film. Right. Yeah, um, obviously. Do you know the guy, the guy who gets shot in the back while he's talking to Joan? Yeah. Him. That's the guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got... a shame that Aaron didn't do worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, it's it's the uh, yeah. T seriously, if you just look up but the whole what happened, what went on behind the scenes. Um, yeah, the, the, the stuff the French. You know, <laughs> just. And no, I don't blame the French. No, I do blame the French because they followed her. Yeah. She said, oh, I've, I've spoken to the Archangel Angel Gabriel. And all the French went, yeah, we'll follow you into battle then. Well, you she, won, she you, won a lot of battles from him. She did. Well, she won two major battles, technically. Um, and then she took over. Orleans and... Did, and um, did walk over them after that. And she did. And, and then we... Well, um, I don't well, really know much about her. No, it's not that. It's the fact that the English are too busy fighting themselves. The, the English king was mad like today. at the time. Yeah, the English king was absolutely mad. Um, the um, we, Which is what led to the War of the, Rose, uh, the, War of the Roses, the, the figures you can see behind here, War of the Roses. Um, what led to that was the complete incompetence of the um, the monarchy. They the lost France to incompetence and stupidity. Um, and then we had a huge civil war. Yeah, and then we had a massive civil war, which, incidentally, the non-Yorkists those filthy Lancastrians, won by aid of the French, which just really, really is annoying. Really annoying. Um, also, King Richard's a bit of not very intelligent for charging in on his own to try and kill the Lancastrian king. He had a chance to kill, and um, yeah, he, he, he actually had a chance to... But if he didn't do that, he would have won. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Overall. Yeah, if, if he would have killed him, that would have been... He just slowly went towards him. With um, his army, and that happened near where we used to live. Um, his castle was the castle we used to visit on a on a weekend and get ice creams and climb up to the top and look out. Of the one no, that's completely demolished. Really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's where his his army was camped and everything. And uh, it was destroyed in the English Civil War. It was held held out against the royalists and the royalist not the royalists. It was royalist, and it was held out against the parliamentarians. And after the war, every castle that supported the the king was blown up. Because you know, stuff Parliament, honestly, just like wh why does the bad guys always win? Parliament won when they shouldn't I have know. done. We uh, um, we we, we stopped Guy Fox. We did stop. Yeah, we stopped the Catholics. Only, Other than that, only because though um, he went back to check on his gunpowder. <laughs> well, actually, only because one of the conspirators wrote a letter to a friend and said, "Totally, yes. do not go <laughs> on well. this day to Parliament. Whatever you do, in fact, don't even be in London." And so he just went to the Lord Privy Council and I mean, said, I think "I've got this." And horrible histories have names for him. It's called uh, something the idiot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Although the last stand of those guys is pretty amazing. Um, in the f they fled to a country house. And uh, all their powder got wet because it was raining. And they put their powder in front of the fire to dry it out. And it blew up. So two of them were blind. And then the English army arrived. The, 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 and um, they, they actually had a gunfight. And, and two men, two brothers, charged out of the door and were killed by the same bullet. <laughs> Which just... It's, it's great. I don't think that God... God <laughs> I don't think God was on their side. <laughs> Not time, though. 
So that's only happened twice in history, one with JFK and the other time with these two brothers. So, <laughs> um, so that's it. That's um, the figures and that's it. Goodbye. <laughs> no, sorry. Right, let's actually start the video. Sorry. Right. We have this sprue. Now, this sprue is the same sprue you get in the Knight's box. Right? And this is the guys in all white armor, which is the um, shiny, the shiny, shines on it. shiny, shiny armor. And they have the weapons that we discussed in that video. So I'm not going to go on and on and on and on about the same thing. It's silly. Right, now we have this. And this is English Bowman. And these are arguably the best bowmen in the world. Um, unlike films, by the way, where... Isn't that because of the bow? Yes. Yeah. And the training. Um, uh, these are professional soldiers. Um, some of them were Welsh. Some of them were... They were British. There were some of them were Welsh. Some of them were Lowland Scots. Uh, some of them were from north. Some of them were from south. And some maybe even came from Norfolk. Well, I think the best thing about bowmen is that you don't have to wear much armour. So you just no. fire your bow. If someone's going to charge you, just run into the woods. If it's cavalry, oh, yeah. you're stuck. You can't do anything to it. That Where's his cavalry? Yeah, and while they're dismounting, just shoot them. Well, if it's cavalry, you have this uh, five-foot stake and you have a line of oh, them. Oh, yeah, there you go. The cavalry stop in front of you and you shoot them in the face. Um, incidentally, English bowmen would simply shoot the horse. Yeah, it would make sense. Yeah, yeah, because in England it was perfectly legal to kill horses and eat them for food. In France, it was illegal to kill horses, which was very surprising. Whenever the French attacked the English, the English just shot the horse. And also, if you shoot a horse, you don't kill it. The horse gets annoyed. Yeah. And it, yes, many French knights were trampled by horses. Because the um, horse would just throw you off because it would be in pain, wouldn't it? Yeah. Although I'm not sure if horse could actually kill a human, uh, kill a knight. Um, no, it's because we have run away. Yeah, we have discussed this before. And a horse will run over a, a, a knight and the knight can get back up again. But... Um, the knight's going to be covered in mud now and he can't see through his visor. He's going to have to lift his visor and get shot in the face by one of these bowmen. Um, it, it's not like the films. In the films, you have thousands of arrows all being fired at the same time. Yeah, if you're Persian. Not these guys. And how did the Persians do, by the way? They didn't, really they didn't do anything, know, right. Maybe, maybe wounded for one... Them, for one them, it wasn't accurate. <laughs> it just how awesome it looks. Yes, yeah, it just <laughs> looks good. We, you know, we... we, we We'll, we'll, we'll hide the sun with our arrows. Fine, we'll fight in the shade. They from their king that whipped the sea for being naughty. Yes, this is the same guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very true. Um, so, <laughs> so um, now you don't do what the Persians did and just cover the sky in arrows. No, you have a bowman and he stands there and he picks a target and he aims and he shoots and it hits whatever he aims at. And arrows will go through armour. Um, forget what you see on films. Um, arrows will go. You will. Uh, you did see knights with arrows sticking out of them. I mean, it, it depends on where you hit them. Well, it, because the whole point of armor is that it's curved. So yes. the arrow would just all the power would get turned off. Yes, yeah, so if you get it, on the, you have to get it at the right angle to actually yeah. get it to stick in. But arrows would stick in. They wouldn't kill the guy, but they might cut him a little bit. The arrow won't. The arrowhead won't go in very far, but it might go in far enough to start cutting his skin or his clothing and you get enough arrows in him it's going to slow him down and it's going to make him weaker and that I a really good shot right through the visor um, which is another way the English would do it and as I said about the mud um, the, the, um, the French at Agincourt fell in the mud now mud isn't going to affect you much it's not even that heavy to be honest um, but you will get it in your visor and you have very small eye slits in your visor like here, very small eye slits. We have a helmet which has much bigger eye slits than these. These eye slits were tiny. And one thing you will notice is if you get a bit of mud there, thick clay mud, which is like you get at Agincourt, that eye slit is now covered. Now you have steel, uh, uh, steel gloves. You can't wipe your eye slit clean. Mm. You have steel gloves. So you, have to lift your visor you lift your chest. visor, yes. And you get an arrow in the face because an English bowman is not going to miss. Because the English bowmen were the best bowmen in the world. And guess what? We won Agincourt. We're outnumbered five to one and slaughtered the French. Well, in the end, the king just wanted to do one to one. Um, yes, well, he did that before. He, um, uh, the, his brother, when his brother was king, there was a big battle in England. Civil war. As I said, we're having lots of civil wars at this point. And um, per Sir Percy, I think, was it Sir Percy? Had, had rebelled, or Sir Cecil, whatever. He'd rebelled against the, the king, and his brother was king. Um, Harry's brother was, ki uh, was king. And 
um, they were going to fight this battle and um, Harry came out and Harry, Henry yeah Henry is it Henry not Harry oh, uh... but it was King Henry wasn't it it was King Henry sorry too many kings it, it was too many yeah sorry King Henry came uh, sorry Prince Henry right he was a younger brother said no let's not fight a battle because we're all English we're not going to you know what's the point in killing each other um, I will fight single combat with, with your leader and he did, and he won, and he killed the leader. Um, and everyone cheered. And But his brother was really annoyed because he wanted to be famous for winning a battle. And so he fell out with his brother, and then later died, and his brother became king. So that's the kind of guy Harry, Henry was. He, 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 he would rather save lives and risk his own life in single combat than... Um, Clearly the French king, Adam Cop, felt, uh, felt the same thing after a while. Oh, uh, the, the, well... Um, the, then again, the, isn't that just courtesy for them? No, a the, duel? Um, yes, yes. But I don't think the French were up to playing games at that point. We, we'd been owning them pretty much, <laughs> constantly. <laughs> um, but, yeah, yeah. Um, the leader of the French, he was taken prisoner. I think it was wounded, it was wounded Adam Cop, who was taken prisoner, and he ended up working for the English. So he joined the English, um, although Boussico, um, um, but there were a couple of other leaders. One of them died. I think Harry, uh, Henry killed, Harry killed him. Um, and there was an, one of the other, the leader of the first wave Harry killed, Henry killed, sorry. Um, and there was a, there were two brothers. Um, oh, I don't know. It's all history. I don't know. Look it up. And, and, and yeah. Anyway, these are the bowmen, and they're bowmen. And I could go into detail about all the little different bits, but it's gone to eleven minutes, so I'm going to save time and show you all the different bits as they actually look. Because I didn't realise I'd been waffling so much about stuff. Right. So there they go. They are the English knights. Can you get the lamp from the yeah, sure back room? Right, I just realised it's starting to go a bit... No, the sun's moved, that's why. There's a task. Yes, the sun's usually over. Showing all the spiderwebs above us. Well, whose fault's that for not cleaning it? It's not my job to clean it. Well, no, the person who's supposed to clean things is uh, off her feet at the moment because she just had a baby. Right, so that's what they look like. And you have some great little poses and the bows look great. Um, you may notice with these bows, I have put string on all of them which is a lot harder than I thought it would be. I did one and was quite proud of it, and then I realised I was going to have to do all of them because I'd done one, and I'm going to be annoyed by the time I finish this army, I think. Um, but that's the... They're the bows with the string attached. Um, they have all different types of arrow... So arrows in packs and all, arrows in bungles... Bundles? Bungles? Bundles. And you all have one of these little stakes. Uh, every man carried a stake, and if you had a line of men, then you, then you line the stakes up, and you can hide behind them. Um, and here are the officers for the bow. Um, these are men at arms. Uh, this is clearly a captain or a, a lord, whatever, and he has the captain's um, head thing on. I can't remember what they call it now. You may as well call it an insignia. Yes, it's basically an insignia. It's a way of saying, "Look, I'm here." And that's just a regular man at arms who's just, he's probably backing the captain up to be honest, he's his bodyguard. And that's them. And every single soldier, regardless of colours, has the has this here. Now, um, I mentioned before in the other video that the English on campaign did not carry different uniforms and stuff. And certainly the knights didn't, the knights were all in white armour. These guys were in their own clothing and some of them, like this guy, is clearly part of the king's retinue. He's he's a soldier who was employed by the king personally, hence he has the king's colours on his tunic. But that's simply because when he joined the army he was part of the king's retinue. So it's, he also has the white and red, oh sorry, the red cross. Uh, denoting him as a in regular English bowman. Uh, they all have that on their uniform. He is also a man in the king's service. And then you've got the others in normal civilian clothes. That's another one of the king's men there. Um, so I have quite a few of the king's men because most of them, there were a lot of he he Henry's troops who he personally employed. Um, and that's who they are. And then you have some regular guys who are just in normal clothing. That's just a bit of 
stuff. Um, whereas knights and lords, they were not allowed their own colours. These would probably be their own actual clothing at this point. Um, it's just what they're wearing. So what do you think? Awesome. Should I take this off now? Can I put that off? It's, um, lighting, terrible. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, but uh, I think you've got a basic idea of what they look like. And if I adjust the camera, oh, we should um, level it off. Uh, now, I will lastly mention, you do get this book with it, um, which has lots of pictures about the English army. And you will notice a tabard there. Uh, that's the troops on the back. That's the king's clothing. Um, you have a few other lords there. And we have all the nice little flags and things in the back, which is absolutely awesome. Um, although, you see all these lovely flags, all of each different earl and duke and stuff, all the coats of arms. Um, when on campaign in France, the only flag the English carried was that. You did not carry your own colours on the battlefield. That's a no-no. You carry the English flag and nothing else. And that partly to do with morale. Is that the king's colours there? That's the king's colours. There you go. That's the king's actual flag. There. Um, so you would see that on the battlefield. But that's all. That's all you would see. And um, this is the flag you would see actually carried in combat in france yes that's what you would carry these in england yes no problem whatsoever but uh not these guys international yeah you also have um the plantagenet's flag that's the plantagenet's flag you always see in the films he's always wearing the king always wears the plantagenet yeah coat of arms um always. we don't we don't really know if he did wear it we don't know um that is the king's personal colors there and um, we don't really know if he wore this on the battlefield, which is that guy there. Harry clearly thinks that. Um, yes, well, that's the, the royal colours right there. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. That's all I've really got to mention. Um, do you want to mention anything else? Pretty much everything, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Um... That's the figures you get in the box, and they're absolutely great. I love them. Um, really like them. Um, actually, I've just noticed on the back of the box they have the English flag there. That's the flag used by the king, which was said. I suppose you could use either flag. I don't know why those guys are there, but uh, I'm not sure if, like, if you were made a commander, and therefore you were leading men, you would need a flag to signify that rather than English flag. Not sure. I will have to look that up before I finish the army. Mm -hmm. um, because I might need to add a few flags to our list. So that's it. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and go. Do you want to start again? <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and comment down below what you think of the English Army. That's everything from me. And everything from him. You've already done it. Oh yeah, see ya. Yeah, you fool. You foolish man. Right, I'm going now. See ya. Bye.